You're listening to the Better for America podcast presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. Today, we we are just so privileged to have with us this extraordinary woman, Sarah Carter. She is an award-winning national and international investigative reporter who covers national security, terrorism, immigration, and other cutting edge issues. She was also on the frontline coverage of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. I, uh, currently, she is an investigative reporter for Fox News. A Fox News contributor hosts her own podcast, The Sarah Carter Show. And we are thrilled to have her with us again, an extraordinary patriot, source of unique insight, and a good friend. Sarah, welcome back. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for having me back on. And thank you so much, AMAC, and for everybody who's a part of AMAC for having such an incredible organization that really stands up for all of our values. It's I, I feel I feel privileged that that you sponsor the podcast and that you're a part of my life. So thank you for having me on the show. You know, Sarah, thanks. That that's important because our members, they so appreciate you and what you're doing. And and the reason why today is just a wonderful day to have you with us is you're doing really good and important work. My understanding is you are currently in Texas. You are witnessing yes. what's happening. Can you tell us where you are, why you're there and what you see? So I've been here throughout most of the year. I've been coming down and covering the immigration surge. I call it a tsunami. I've never seen anything quite like this. And I've been covering the border since 2005, 2004. I'm trying to remember what was my very first story out on the border. And it it was a long time ago, Rebecca, but I've never seen it this bad. Uh, I'm back in the Rio Grande Valley sector. Uh, My job, and I believe my job, our job as journalists or my job as a columnist and journalist now is to bring the American people the truth. And I could tell you last night, just being out in La Jolla, it's an area right near the border that's seeing a lot of influx. Smugglers are using it to bring in people. They're also using that area to bring in narcotics. And um, last night, hundreds of people came pouring across the border again, some nights up to 4,000 people. Hundreds of people came pouring across the border. I, you know, I was sitting there talking to a lot of them. I want people to understand that most of these migrants that turn themselves into Border Patrol actually believe and have been told that the Biden administration wants them in the United States. This is what they're telling me. They say the, the border's wide open. We just have to get here. We know that President Biden won't turn us back. That's why we're here. We're leaving our countries. We're leaving Nicaragua, El Salvador, Haiti. Other parts of in parts of Africa, other parts of the Caribbean, like Cuba. Um, I've seen people come from as far away as Iran. People are just coming in. They're getting the message loud and clear across the across the globe that Biden has the border wide open. Last night, there were a lot of sick people again. The week before last, I was with a group, um, a woman that I encountered. I found actually we went looking for her when some migrants had told us a woman had collapsed on the road with her two-year-old daughter. She was so deathly ill at that moment. I thought that if we didn't arrive there, she would have lost her life. She was bleeding out profusely. We didn't know what she had. We comforted her. I tried to reach Border Patrol. We got somebody to come down in EMT 45 minutes after arriving there. I want you to think about the humanitarian crisis that this policy is creating. On top of the drugs and narcotics and national security, there is nothing humane about having a policy that basically allows drug cartels and human traffickers to move people like slaves into the United States of America, abuses them, leaves them to die. Because what if we wouldn't have shown up? Her two-year-old daughter would have seen her mother die. You know, we eventually had EMTs show up. We were eventually able to get her, you know, to a van. But I tell you this, Rebecca, I've seen it over and over and over again here on the border. The American people aren't getting the truth. And Actually, Mayorkas just landed today. He is the head of Department of Homeland Security, um, Secretary Mayorkas. And so you understand what I've been doing here this week. Every single DHS official that I've spoken with said that the White House wants to hide this. They've been asking them to clean up around McAllen, put people on buses, move them out so that by the time the DHS secretary arrives. It'll look it'll look a little bit better. Than it does, but right. it's so bad now they can't even do that. 
Unbelievable. I know that last time we spoke, we, we talked about your deep concerns about the Mexican mafia and gangs. And today it seems like all of our concerns are just widening. They're getting so much worse. You said it yourself, the Biden White House, they've got to know what's happening, but they're turning a blind eye, trying to downplay the whole thing. Uh, You know, and we need to understand that Americans are justifiably concerned. Uh, We see jumps in crime, drug trafficking, human trafficking, illegal. It's, you know, it's just terrible. I'd like for you to explain to our our listeners, help us understand, if you would, why is a border, uh, you know, sanctity at our borders necessary and important to, to our nation? Because there are so many people that are being called racists because they 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 are very dis, uh, unhappy with what's happening and very angry at the Biden administration for turning a blind eye. I'm all for legal immigration, but why Me is too. having a secure border important for our nation? Help us understand that. Well, first of all, um, my mother was from Cuba. I am half Latina, first generation born in my mother's family here in the United States. I speak Spanish. It was part of me growing up. I learned it from my mom in my household. And I use my language skills to be able to speak to people at the border. This has nothing to do with being anti-immigrant or racist. If you really care about the people that are coming into this country illegally, if you really care about the sanctity of our nation and the people that live here, then the administration will put a stop to this. People are living in the shadows. When they come in here illegally, it's not humane. First of all, most of the time, they never report back to court. They're living in the shadows. They're living illegally in the country. They're afraid of being thrown out. So therefore, they become the slave to whoever they work for. A lot of the people that are coming across that border are paying $16,000 to $20,000 in some cases to the drug cartels and human traffickers that are moving them through. They don't have that kind of cash on them. So what do they do? They become enslaved to the cartels and to the traffickers. A lot of young women go into prostitution. There's cantinas up and down along the border. A lot of the people are being used to mule narcotics into our country. So when somebody maybe, let's say from Ohio, or you're from Indiana, or you're from Montana, or up New York, upstate New York, and you think, well, why do I have to worry about the border? What does this have to do with me? It has everything to do with you. Those drugs are coming across the border. They're coming into your communities. The drug cartels don't only exist in Mexico. If you think that, you're blind. The drug cartels operate inside the United States. In fact, Sinaloa has a very heavy hand in Ohio and in other parts of the country where they move and distribute their narcotics throughout the country. They're poisoning our children. They're poisoning our nation. They're creating a humanitarian crisis at the border, and we're assisting them in it. By our own policies, our government is actually, and I am not just saying this myself, I'm talking to Border Patrol agents. I'm talking to ICE officials. I'm talking to DEA. We are literally aiding and abetting the drug cartels and the human traffickers. If we don't take people into custody, if we see the smugglers bringing human beings into our country and we accept them and we don't arrest the smugglers, we don't hold these drug cartels accountable or these human traffickers, but instead deliver the people and pay for their tickets and move the children into facilities that are, by the way, by the way, probably the only place they have right now is some of those facilities that the United States has put together. Can you imagine being a child just without a parent right now or being trafficked by these predators and what happened to these children on the way? If we continue to do that, just like the Border Patrol agents tell me, we're nothing more than the last leg of the smuggling process. Mm. And You know, I tell this to people all the time. Look, I care. I'm out there. I want to cry half the time I'm there because I see these children. They're so beautiful. You know, it's not their fault. They're kids. The littlest ones are coming with their parents or coming with a stranger or coming with someone, a guardian. And, you know, they, they didn't make that decision for themselves. But if you really care about these children, if you really care about the people, then you will put a stop to it. President Biden. Right. If you really care about this. Otherwise, come down here and come with me. I could bring Kamala Harris with me. I'll take President Biden. They can see what I've seen. And then they can tell me that I'm wrong. Sure. But none of them are out here on the border. Um, And 
It's very tough, Rebecca. It's very tough. These Border Patrol agents really are the first line of defense. I, I want all your listeners to know how much I honor and appreciate our law enforcement officers. They put themselves on the line every day. A lot of them have caught COVID out here on the border. 30% of the people that are crossing in right now, we're estimated to have COVID or the new Delta variant. Um, people are very sick. The hospitals have been filled up. The community resources are being depleted out here on the border because they can't, just can't keep up with it, with the need. And it's not just COVID. It's a pregnancy. It's a, it's a dehydrated child. It's somebody with MDR tuberculosis, you know, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. It's somebody else who has a heart condition. So these are very serious issues. This is why the American people should care because it's about all of us and it's about sustainability and uh, it's about our national security as well. You know, when Kamala Harris was on the campaign trail, boy, did she have a heyday talking about uh, the children that were being held. Uh, the numbers then look beautiful compared to what we're seeing now. If only we could go back to those days where uh, Donald Trump had things under much better control. Uh, I agree with you. We want it. We want people to come in legally. But this is this is a humanitarian crisis. This is this is killing our our, our children. Uh, drugs, fentanyl are, are getting into into America, into right. our, our local neighborhoods. Crime is soaring. And I wanted to mention, you noted that the high temperatures should make crossing the desert a death wish. I saw one of your uh, Twitter posts, uh, uh, thousands of people under a bridge in hot heat. Uh, and yet we're seeing a large number of illegals crossing. Uh, what do you think is giving people the confidence that they're going to get into the U.S. illegally now when historically uh, in these, these really hot months uh, and dangerous weather conditions, we weren't seeing as many come in? I, I just saw the number uh, for June is explosive, July explosive. Well, yeah, you have over 188,000 last month that came into the it came into the U.S. It was interesting. I was talking to a farmer who put it into perspective. He's a landowner out here, actually lived, family's been here for generations. He said, you know, when we sent men to the field in Normandy, to the Battle of Normandy, we sent roughly around 150,000 men to fight in Normandy. We had 188,000 people crossing our border just last month. Yeah. And over a million, about 2 million is expected this year. And you ask me, why are they doing it in this intense heat? Why are they risking their lives? Because they are. I mean, I can't begin to tell you the heat index, 120, 118, people are dehydrated. They're coming with babies, little babies, you know, in their arms, you know, some Pedialyte left in a bag, maybe, you know, and some of them get lost out in the brush. And, and just so that your listeners can understand what the brush is like, you know, a lot of people thought people say, oh, it's like a desert out there. I said, no, no, it's not. It's actually very alive. The terrain is a lot of mesquite trees, thorns. You know, the river, uh, large tarantulas, rattlesnakes, um, all kinds of amazing, uh, you know, uh, life in the river, but dangerous, it's dangerous. And a lot of these kids come across. They've been bit by brown recluse. They are battling, um, you know, heat exhaustion. Every single one of them, all of the parents tell me and the people that are crossing, they say, well, we know now is the time because President Biden is opening the border. We know now is the time. What they're afraid of is that because there's been so much attention, they're rushing now. They don't yeah. want it to close. So now you have these huge waves. And I was just talking to a source of mine. He's on the border of Guatemala and uh, Mexico, and he's in a village near there. And he said, oh, my gosh, Sarah, I, I'm sending you some reports. I said, what is it, Oscar? His name's Oscar. You'll see maybe some of his reports on my website later. He said, I've got over 60,000 people in this area that are heading to the United States. Wow. 60,000. Yeah. In, in Panama right now, 40,000. People are heading here because the policy is so upside down that we aren't even taking care of our own, the United States citizens. We have opened the gateways and the floodgates from all over the, we don't even know who's coming in. That's at right. the park at Anzaldua State Park right out here, Rebecca, the, um, they've shut it down. It's, a, it's not a state park, sorry, it's Anzaldua Park. It's a city park, a city park. And in the park are these huge mammoth tents and they're set up by Catholic charities. 
And I went up there to say, who do I need to talk to? I want to go in and see what's going on in here. They only let CBS in one day and it was under their guidance. I have been told that every person in some of the, like some of the big tents, the entire tent is filled with COVID patients. So they, I can't get in. I can't get in unless Catholic Charities gives me permission to go into a city park. So I want people to understand how the administration is trying to hide the truth from the American people. I'm not here to hearsay. I'm here to tell the truth. I'm so glad that you're there. We need more people there. We need to get the word out. We know that they're facing so many obstacles as you, right. you've just laid out. They're entering sick. Many have COVID, other diseases, dehydration, victims of human trafficking. This is real stuff. Uh, but on the COVID issue, Sarah, do you find it as shocking as I do that we have a president who actually seems intent on mandating conditions that restrict U.S. liberties for COVID, yet he seems completely indifferent to what's going on uh, when we've got migrants crossing illegally. He's ignoring the influx of COVID positive illegal aliens, which is probably not even the greatest of all of the problems, really, when right. you look at it, because you've got a greater chance of being owned by a drug cartel or, or you know, dying when you're crossing, let alone COVID. But the, the double standard here, the way that he's treating American people versus the way uh, he's, he's completely indifferent to illegals that are coming across, what are your thoughts? on that specifically? It's the hypocrisy that kills me. And it makes me question why, what do they really, are they really concerned about COVID? Because if you were really concerned about COVID, you would be shutting down the border. You know, you would be, I look last week, the week before last, when I was out here and I encountered the woman, I did become very sick. I've already had COVID. I made a choice on my own to be vaccinated. That was my choice because I'm at the border quite often and I'm already, I've already had every vaccination known to man. I'm like a Petri dish of experiments, right? So I said, you know, I'm going to have, so I had my vaccine. I had everything. I went out there, got really, really sick, had to get on a, you know, so my one week off was just me recovering. Um, but you can see that it's not just COVID that we're worrying about. It's, it's other illnesses. The government won't shut that down. And you have to ask yourself, why? What is the purpose for the Biden administration to leave the border wide open? What is the purpose for people all over the world, human traffickers and others to be advertising that if you can pay your way and just get in here illegally, once you touch ground and turn yourself into Border Patrol, you're going to be home free. The United States government isn't doing anything to stop you. So if you're applying legally to become a citizen, I know a lady who had her green card. She just became a citizen, a good friend. And she was so excited and she was so happy to become a citizen of the United States. Worked so hard for that citizenship. Worked so hard for it. And is a real American, right? But she's saying, and she's from Bolivia, and she's telling me, how is this okay? How is it OK that I had to work so hard for my citizenship and now the, the borders are right open? So I don't have an answer for you, Rebecca. The White House doesn't seem to want to answer that question. That is really the most important question. If you're worried yeah. about covid, if you're worried about lives in America, if you're going to shut our schools down again, lock us down again, force us to wear masks, why is the border wide open and why don't you care? Yeah. And I've been talking with a lot of other people and, and Jessica Vaughn, for example, uh, she's an expert on the matter. And and she said, uh, quite truthfully, uh, they want them here for, for because they think there's a greater chance that these folks will, in fact, vote Democrat. And, uh, you know, if that, in fact, is is the real truth of the matter and they're just letting the numbers swell so that they can have a greater you know chance of victory in future elections. Right. Shame on them. It is absolutely disgusting. It is uh, unacceptable and uh, it's not protecting all Americans, you know. Right. So who holds them accountable? So who holds right. them accountable? That's my big question. When we know they're literally violating the law, but it's the government that's doing it and then making our law enforcement agents who are doing their job to protect us complicit in breaking the own, our own laws, who holds them accountable? And that's the How bigger question. 
Yeah. And and that's a question our listeners want to know. What can Americans best do or do best to keep this administration accountable? I mean, I think conversation is a great place to start. It is. It's conversation. It's holding your lawmakers accountable. It's sending them letters. It's calling their offices. We have to remember that they work for us. We do not work for them. They are not more important than us. Um, that we need to work together to keep the sanctity of our nation and our national security intact. I was just, as we were talking, news is flashing over my screen, and I see that the United States is going to be sending troops to Afghanistan now to evacuate the U.S. Embassy. And you asked me at the beginning, you said, Sarah, you know, you worked a lot in Afghanistan. It's true. Um, And that's another huge issue right now. You know, we're, we're talking about national security and the border. We're evacuating our staff right now out of the U.S. Embassy. We're leaving a lot of good people that worked for the United States at the peril of the Taliban because this administration did what they did. But our border is wide open. And remember this. They're coming back. Al Qaeda is still there. Islamic State is still there. These terrorists are still there. And they're looking at that border. And we know that's a fact because we accidentally, which was great, got somebody to leak that document that those two Yemeni men came in through California months ago that were wanted on a terror watch list. So that's just so that people understand it's not only a humanitarian crisis, but we really are at a crux where our national security is being threatened. President Biden's only job is to protect the American people. That's what he's there for. He's not there to transform our country and to turn us into some socialist state. He's there to protect us. And obviously he's not doing that. Yeah, well said. Sarah, just a couple of quick more questions. I know how busy you are and you're doing such great work on the field and getting the truth out. Uh, But I want to mention you are a daughter of a Cuban immigrant. We spoke about this just a few few moments ago and you fought so hard to have a life here in America. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, your mother fought very hard for you to have a life in America. And we know that you have a special place in your heart for Cuba. Now, Cuba, too, is facing so much turmoil. Uh, People are fighting for their freedom. So we stand with the Cuban people fighting against their communist country. Uh, But their government is trying to silence them. Can you give our listeners some insight to what is happening in Cuba and how perhaps maybe they can help fight for the Cubans? Well, I think, you know, and and thank you so much for giving me that opportunity. I was in Miami covering the story for Sean quite a bit. Um, I spoke to a lot of older Cuban exiles, people who actually stood and fought against Fidel Castro um, early on. And my mom came to the United States on the Johnson Freedom Flights. Uh, I I agree. We need to stand firm for liberty and freedom. You know, we have to stand firm on principle. That means we stand up and say, you know what? The Cuban people have a right, have a right to speak out, have a right to do what they need to do to protect their own country. And how we should support them is, look, we can open up the Internet. We can open up communications for them. And that's the most important thing right now. We don't need to go there and fight their fight. Let the Cuban people fight their fight for right now, but let let them know that we are here, that we're backing them just the same way we should have been with the Iranian people in the rise of the Green Party movement, right? We should stand up for our allies. We should stand on principle. That is what makes us so great. When we stop doing that, God help us because there won't be any other place to go. I mean, this is, I keep telling everyone, this is it. If you want to know why this is it, just come down to the border. There are people from over a hundred countries trying to get in here. While some of our own people who have been given everything, I feel, I feel like a millionaire, a billionaire, just by being born in the United States. I don't need to have the money. I just feel like I am the most privileged, blessed person on earth for being born here. You want to know how important this country is? Come down to the border and just look at the thousands of people from all over the world that are trying to get in here daily. And that's all you need to know. Once this goes, yeah, yeah, once this goes, that's it. We have to protect our freedoms, Sarah. Another reason people want to come here because we're a free, free country, a free nation. We have liberty. Exactly. We have liberty. We're, we're, 
we're, we're blessed. And, you know, and, and I agree with you. That's why I love AMAC so much because you guys are just so focused on all of the issues that really make this nation so great. You're just founded on it. I always say, you know, the foundation is what's important. We can't afford, you know, to crack our foundation, right? We can't afford for this nation to, to be in peril. Uh, we fought too hard. Too many people have died for this and too many people have died trying to get here. We should honor that. We should re respect that. And I agree with you. We need a new immigration policy. We need to enforce our immigration laws. And we need to build strong bilateral relationships with our neighbors to the South so that their people are empowered to stay home and work and build lives for their families and uh, not come here. You know what I mean? But, but build strong so we don't have Russia and China next door to us or, you know, communist governments on the rise. There's a lot of things we can do, Rebecca, to make this country better. And that's why Cuba, we saw what happened. It's an island that was taken by the communists. It's still controlled by the communists. It is still a problem for us today. It's been a problem for the Cuban people. And, um, and we need to continue to stand up and fight for that liberty. Um, and that may just be as simple as writing a letter. You know, and I'm not talking about going crazy and fighting. I'm talking about doing the right thing, writing a letter to your lawmakers, calling them on the phone, getting involved in your community, you know, standing up for your country, putting a flag in front of your house and saying that you're proud of the men and women that fight for this nation. Little simple things that make us great. And when somebody yeah. from, you know, one of these other groups, I like to say one of these other leftist groups tries to put down this country, just tell them, you know, Hey, Sarah Carter's invited you to the border. She wants you to see the people from all the countries around the world that are trying to come here to the country that you say is the worst. Because yeah, it's obviously not. Yeah, that's right. Uh, very good. Very good that you're reminding people what they can do. They can get involved with AMAC too. We make it real easy. Go to amac.org. Right. Learn a lot about what you can do. Sarah, I have one last question. You, you know, as an investigative reporter, you're pushing a number of great themes on your own podcast. I love it. The Sarah Carter Show. Uh, oh, people thank you. That. Because if you love Sarah so like I do, uh, Sarah, you've just got um, just got a way of communication and a way of really speaking the truth. I wanted to ask you if you could help us see maybe around the corners a little bit, understand what might be coming next. I don't know if you have any investigations underway that you think America and our millions of AMAC members should know about. Uh, anything happening out there? So, yeah, so um, I we are actually doing investigations in Central America and Mexico. I have a foundation as well. It's called the Dark Wire. It's an investigation foundation. It's very small, but we I have a great interns that work with me and um, we've been focused, very focused on what's happening in Central America, what's happening in Mexico as far as immigration, as far as the involvement of China in our hemisphere what's happening uh, with that, how does that affect us as Americans, and what we can do to build sustainable relationships with our neighbors. Look, I'm going to bring as many stories as I can from the front lines, and I think that's important. But I think being on the ground also opens our eyes to things we might not have seen, right? And that being, you know, the involvement of other nations that may be hostile towards us in our own hemisphere. And I think American people really need to wake up, like I said, and just, and see what's going on around you. And I hope that I can do that. I hope I can bring that to you. I know we're all so busy. This just happens to be my job. My job just happens to be digging up, you know, information and getting it out there to you and holding the government accountable. Look, they, we're smart enough. We can make our own decisions for ourselves and for our family. That's what our founding fathers intended when they put together the Declaration of Independence, when the Constitution was established. They believed in the American people. I believe in the American people. I don't need a government to babysit me. I certainly don't need a government to take away my civil liberties and my rights. All they're there for and all his job is, is to protect the national security of this country, period. End of story. So yeah. my job is to hold them accountable. I'll keep bringing those stories to you. I'll keep bringing them to AMAC. I'll put them on my podcast, The Sarah Carter Show. I love having, I would love for you to come on. You need to come on my podcast mm -hmm. now, Rebecca, again. So I want, you know, I want you on my podcast. I love your podcast. Um, and I think that's important. We're keeping the conversation going. 
And you and I, by having these shows and by talking and giving a platform that Mark Zuckerberg or Jack or any of these other folks can't take away, I think is, uh, is, is the American dream, right? I mean, this is what America is all about. I mean, we're pioneers. Mm -hmm. We're pioneers. We don't mind. We don't mind going against the grain. That's right. Well, you know, it's because of your you, being so brave and courageous and really doing it. A lot of people talk, not everyone takes action. So the fact that you uh, take big risks uh, in order to get the truth out is um, just uh, so appreciated in ways that I could never even express using words. Sarah, thank you so much. You've given us so much to think about, as you always do. And we'll definitely look forward to having you back with us again soon. So thank you for what you do for America, for your patriotism and for your conviction. Uh, to those of you listening, thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you have not downloaded the AMAC News app, please do so. You can watch and listen to all of our podcasts, plus track breaking news right on our news app. Uh, just hit and subscribe to the AMAC News app. You can do it right from your phone. Go to your, um, I guess if it's Google, it's Google, Google Play. Is that right, guys? And if you've got an iPhone, you can go ahead to the App Store and just search AMAC. We don't take any information, not an email address. There's no cost. You'll get these podcasts and all kinds of breaking news that you won't get anywhere else. So happy to have you with me, Sarah. Thanks again. Thank See you. you have a great and day. Excellent. Until next time, everyone out there listening, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Better for America podcast. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, visit us at www.amac.us.